Well, first thing to note is I aim to turn over my stock every quarter. So I look to completely turn over my stock four times a year. So when I'm doing my order management, and I'll talk a little bit more about ordering later on because we've got Q4 coming up, so it's going to be a good opportunity to talk about that. Um, when I'm doing my order management, I'm looking at historical trends and I'm looking at future projections about what that particular niche does and I'm basing my ordering on that. But I'm aiming to run out, well not run out, but to, to turn over my stock every quarter. For my first order I ever do, I always aim to run out of stock. Now that is weird and most folks go, what the heck are you talking about? But it's just a philosophy that you come from, a mindset you come from, not that you want to run out of stock, but it puts you in the mind of not ordering too much stock. And for me, I would rather you had a huge success with your first product and ran out of stock than your first order didn't go so well and you've got thousands of dollars worth of stock sitting in FBA. I would rather the former than the latter. So uh, that's why I have this philosophy aim to run out of stock. It just puts you in the mindset that it's okay to order less. For your first order, I think that matters. And then as far as my individual uh, SKUs on, on Amazon are concerned, I treat each of them as a, uh, as a stock. So everybody understands the, the, the concept of stock investing. You order, say, 10 stocks, put them all into your portfolio, and then you monitor each stock in your portfolio. Well, I do the same thing, but with Amazon SKUs, Amazon products, and I'm looking at each product as a standalone business within my portfolio of business, aka all my SKUs. So I treat each of my in initial uh, individual products as an individual business and I look at the performance of each of those individual businesses within my portfolio of businesses that make up my Seller Central account. I hope I've explained that in a way that that makes sense. And by doing that, you then come from a different mindset where you are uh, not looking at the overall performance of your products, but looking at the individual performance of your products. And it gives you the ability to be uh, much more critical of individual products performances. Some do very, very well, others not so well. You've always got that in your mix and so you can get rid of the underperformers and focus more on the overperformers. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some interesting things to think about, Wing. Uh, it's a good question though and it's always going to be dictated by your own profit and loss and your own cash flow forecasts. But the worst thing you can do is run out of cash uh, as I will tell you, uh, if we should ever meet, I'll tell you all about a $10 million a year business that didn't work because we ran out of cash. We grew too quickly. But that's a whole new story for another time. Uh, for now, though, I hope that helps, Wing. Hey, thanks so much for watching that video, and I hope that you got some massive value from it. Before you go, do you live in Australia? If you do, this is for you. Would you like to learn how to sell things on Amazon here in Australia? Would you like to know what sells really, really well and what sells for the maximum amount of profit? Would you like to know where you can source those products from, whether that be in China or here in Australia, and how to source them so you pay bottom, bottom dollar and get maximum value for what you're doing. If you do, please subscribe to my channel and like this video and you'll learn that and much, much more. It's the exact same information that people like Jeff from New South Wales I've used to make $45,000 a month on Amazon that Sue, who's from the sunny coast, has used to purchase herself a brand spankly BMW every single year as a result of her e-commerce business. And the lovely Kate from Barrel in New South Wales has used to make $32,000 a year on, uh, sorry, a month, not a year, a month on Amazon. And indeed, Anthony, who makes $15,000 a month on Amazon, selling, as he puts it, odds and sods. If you'd like to learn the exact same inf information that they use to maximize their profits for their Amazon businesses, subscribe to this video, like my channel, and um, post below if you want me to teach you something. Okay, I'm out of here. Speak to you soon. Bye. Subscribe. Subscribe. Do it now.